next hour. Moving Thank on now you. to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, recovering from two nights of protest and rioting a week ago after it erupted from a police shooting. And now we're learning about another controversy that may have contributed a spark to that violence. CNN's Sarah Seidner has this report for us. Everyone felt it. You know, I think everyone knew that it was inevitable. Milwaukee Alderman Khalif Rainey says the destructive reaction in his predominantly black neighborhood wasn't just over the police shooting. One of the triggers was something much more mundane, the targeting and ticketing practices of police. There are instances where tickets are issued, and they should be. Um, but there are some practices that are predatory. I see the police and I'm like, oh, Lord, not today. Mother of five, Tawana Bridges, says she was caught in a cycle of ticketing hell. Missed payments of fines for things like a broken taillight or parking tickets ballooned into a personal crisis. Sometimes I don't have the extra $50 that they need me to send in. But if I don't send it, then there's a warrant out for my arrest. They'll suspend the license. So either way it goes, like I'm in a lose-lose situation. Molly Jean of Legal Action of Wisconsin says black and poor residents are bearing the brunt of the city's ticketing practices. A 2011 study found that while blacks make up 19 percent of registered drivers in Milwaukee County, they received 69 percent of license suspensions for failure to pay fines. That far outweighs every other ethnicity combined. My clients, you know, um, so many of them lose their license for poverty-related reasons. If it all sounds familiar, it should. No justice! No After a police shooting led to protests and riots in Ferguson, Missouri, a Department of Justice investigation blamed the disproportionate ticketing and fining of black residents there as the underlying catalyst for the unrest. The city relies on the police force to serve essentially as a, as a collection agency for the municipal court rather than as a law enforcement entity after a consent decree, Ferguson changed. Its municipal court now makes just a fraction of what it used to make from fines. But a new class action lawsuit accuses 13 cities surrounding Ferguson of the same practice, policing for profit on the backs of black and poor people. Nonprofit Arch City Defenders brought the suit, claiming a total of $77 million was collected over a five-year period by those 13 cities for municipal court fines, fees, and surcharges in an area with a population of less than 50,000 people. At some point, if you've jailed someone, you know that they don't have the ability to pay, right? Because we'd all pay. Nobody wants to sit in jail. Right. I mean, you're essentially asking someone, how much money do you have to buy your freedom? The cities have balked at the accusation that they've created debtors' prisons. One African-American mayor in one of those cities told me that driving is a privilege, not a right. If you don't want to pay a fine, he said, don't break the law. It's not the policeman's fault for enforcing the law. Pat Kelly leads an association of municipalities in St. Louis County and says while the system should be scrutinized, many of the problems could be solved if residents would simply show up to court. You know, these are the laws of the state that they're enforcing and, and those um, um, warrants and, and those kinds of things are built into law to try to get people to come to court. Alderman Rainey is watching what's happening in Missouri and calling for change in Milwaukee, warning without it, the eruption of anger will reappear. I see devastation. I see something that I hope we never see ever again. Sarah Seidner, CNN, St. Louis.